confession of a father. John Miller was arrested this week for the strangulation of eight-year-old April Tinsley. It's been three days since Nipsey Hussle was gunned down right outside his clothing store. Dozens of people continuing to pay their respects for the musician. The Maryland Court of Appeals has ruled Anand Syed will not get a new trial. 78-year-old Samuel Little confessed to 90 murders from Maryland to Miami, Louisiana to Los Angeles, stretching back almost half a century. The tragic story of a teenage relationship that ended with a young man taking his own life, a young woman going to prison. She researched modes of death. He's the one who drew her into this thing from the beginning.
So please go back and make sure you're talking to people. Educate yourselves about what the tool is. And no matter where you fall on the privacy standpoint, most certainly become informed and talk to other people about it. Because I know us in law enforcement who are concerned about public safety and wanting to get the worst offenders off the street to prevent further victimization, we want to be able to continue to use that. Now, as we move forward, there's going to be new developments. There's going to be other cases that are going to be affected. And we hope that a year from now, we'll be seeing greater successes as we, as we move into the next uh, year. One of the things that I want to emphasize is we're in the great city of New Orleans. You're here to have fun, right? You're here at CrimeCon. You're here to have fun. You're here to learn. But also just be mindful of the subject matter. These are real cases involving real people. We have victim families. Victim, these these uh, families have lost their loved ones, and they want answers. So just be mindful of that. When you have participation and you're asking questions of the speakers, be respectful with your questioning. Also, very important, we always want to put the victims first. It's, it's good to learn about the bad guy, to educate yourself, to understand him. That's what I do, because I want to prevent that type of individual from going and committing more crimes. But we never want to glorify the bad guy. It's the victims first. Now, with some housekeeping things going on before you guys go scatter to the various presentations that are going on. You know, first, the organizers would like to know who in the audience attended the very first crime con. Go ahead, stand up. Stand up. I'm not going to point to anybody out. The organizers thank you because you you kind of took a, a leap of faith. The very first crime con didn't know what it was going to be. You know, so you went ahead and got yourselves there and learned what Crime Con could be. And we saw tremendous growth when the second Crime Con occurred in Nashville. And take a look at what we're dealing with today out here in New Orleans, right? And for those of you that this is your first Crime Con, I will tell you, last year was my first Crime Con. And I couldn't have been more surprised at how friendly everybody was, how welcoming everybody was. So for those of you that are experiencing this the first time, I think you're going to have a fun time interacting with everybody that's in this, this crowd. For those of you posting to social media, we want to make sure that everybody understands what's going on here. So any of your posts that you do, they're asking, could you put the hashtag CrimeCon on it? That way people who are searching for it can actually see everything. We also want to take time to thank Oxygen, the premier sponsor of CrimeCon, without Oxygen backing this. For all the podcasters that are out there, we thank you. And this is where age takes its toll. <laughs> And of course, we want to thank Hilton for hosting this event here. Woo! And keeping it well air conditioned because the 300% humidity outside. <laughs> now, does anybody want to know where next year's Crime Con is going to be? I'm very excited. Orlando, Florida. Thank you very much, and go enjoy it.